Hi, I'm Bill Helms. Uh, I'm with uh, Minion Technologies Group, and uh, I'm going to rebuild, show you how to rebuild a, a coolant adapter from Dominion, a 625X9747. I have a print over here that I'm going to follow with some of the O-rings and some of the materials, purchase materials and stuff that are used on this uh, adapter. I have taken the liberty of going to the copy machine and blowing up uh, the list of uh, materials for the adapter this time. I have uh, a box of tools that I may need, some picks and files and screwdrivers over here. I have a couple of blocks I might have to set this up on. I usually use a bench when I'm doing this adapter so I can use air to uh, take a couple parts uh, off of it. Um, you need a well lit area, a um, little bit of space, got a few rags and a couple wrenches and some Allen wrenches. So uh, now I'll start by taking off the first three screws on the top. It's a relatively simple adapter. And the screws are all metric. I have a small Allen wrench in case small uh, crescent wrench in case the screws are tight. Ah, they seem to be pretty loose. I'll take these three out. <clears throat> There's no springs on this. So I'm not going to have to worry about the manifold shooting up on me. The only place it has springs are down located right here by the jaws. <clears throat> Once I get the screws off, the manifold separates pretty easy. You can see the wetness marks where the O-rings seal around the holes. I'll dump the screws out. Right here you have two different sizes and some high collar lock washers. You can see some of the O-rings here that I'm going to take off with a small pick that I have. They remove pretty easy. I'm going to set these right here off to the side. And now I'm going to loosen the socket head cap screws that are down in the bottom half of the adapter. These are a little bit tighter, so I'll use the crescent wrench. And I'll loosen them. They come out pretty easy. Then you just dump them down on the rag. They have lock washers and they're small M4 socketed cap screws. We'll set them off to the side there. Now you can see the top of the piston 
right here on the top. Now I can take a block. What I got here is a little block of Delrin. So I don't scar it up. And I loosen it up pretty much. Now that it's loose, I can kind of twist it and I'll pull the whole subassembly right out of the piston and uh, the body that holds the uh, jaws and the springs. Now this part right here should twist. And with your thumbs, it should be able to pop that out right there. I can use a couple of blocks of aluminum. I'm going to try. Usually I use air to get this, this piece. If I can set a couple pieces of aluminum down on the edge and push with my fingers, you can see the, the detail moved. Now with my hands, I can pull the sleeve off. With my thumbs, I push down and I can pop the central piece out. The, uh, I believe this here is the piston. This here is uh, the locking sleeve and the housing. And this here is a sleeve housing. Now I can remove all the O-rings from off around the side. It has an O-ring right here in the center for the piston to slide on. I kind of pick that out loose a little bit so that I can just hook it. And I'll set this off to the side. And I'll start with these O-rings. And I'll just get all the O-rings out. And I'll set that off to the side. There are no O-rings on the sleeve. Move these blocks out of the way. I'm back here in the box, and now <clears throat> we will do the piston. I'll take my thumbs and my fingers, and I can push the piston right through the housing. And now here on the piston, I have a glide ring. They use these for details that slide up a back and forth against each other. Just something to slide through. Now I'll get my pick under there and I'll just pull it out gently. Trying not to destroy it because if I have a kit I might have used one out of before, I, I might be able to reuse this in case of an emergency. And I'll set it off here to the side. And then I'll continue by taking off the O-rings. And just kind of pop the pick, get behind it, wiggle it around. This one's kind of a, a big, heavy-duty, thick O-ring there, the main seal. So it comes off a little bit harder. Now, this piece here has 
two flats. You can see a flat on this side and a flat on this side. They're parallel for wrench to fit on it. And I will hold that right there and I should be able to loosen the nose. There it is. Seems to be a little bit tighter. There it is. And that's your nose piece and your piston. Now I'll set these over here and I'll show you how to change the jaws. The jaws have a A shoulder bolt doesn't seem to be marked here. Ah, here it is. It's got an M4 by 16 shoulder bolt. Makes the jaws a little bit easier to to change if you have to change a jaw. You just reach your Allen wrench into the pocket where the socket head is. Loosen it up. Now I've got them all loose, but I'm only going to take one off. And just unscrew it. Once you got that off, you can, and your jaw will pop out with the spring that sets right here in this little pocket. And then up against the wall. And combined with the, the shoulder screw locked inside that groove and that hole, it holds the jaws with the springs. So they have their spring retention to stay open and not close for easy fit on top of the reservoir. Now, I have one more slide ring to remove is right inside the housing here. And I will take my pick and pull it out just a little bit. Got to watch out sometimes they fly around. Now I tried to save this one. And it might still be able to be used in an emergency. You just take the flats and flattens right back out. Now I'll set it off to the side. And there's an O-ring right behind it that we want to remove. Then you have your O-ring right here on the top for the top seal. And that's pretty much the extent of taking and breaking down this here adapter, this one in particular. Now, 
on really bad ones, I could take them to a cleaning tank. And you can see a little bit of residue and a little bit of dirt and some dust from running and filling the reservoirs with coolant. And I'll just wipe all that off. But you'd normally take it to a cleaning tank and clean it with some mineral spirits. Now, while I'm wiping them down, I'm checking with my fingers for any burrs to see if there's any debris or anything sticking up from sliding and moving and then what would happen? getting some wear. And what would happen if you found a burr? Just file it off? Uh, yes, I would use a, have a number of small files and tools at deburr and I can deburr the burr just a little bit lightly going around the edge if there was a deburr on this edge from the piston running back and forth and maybe rubbing against the side now sometimes they get like a side load and it'll wear a little bit on one side. You'll get like a little burr on it. You can take that little burr off and you can use a little piece of scotch bright, smooth it down, and you should have no problem reusing the detail. Unless it's really damaged and it doesn't look like it's gonna hold a seal or anything. But the majority of the times, these aluminum details have a hard coated treatment on it, surface treatment, and a hard coat anodize to help with wear on the moving items. As you can see, this here is a gold anodize. It's a color that they use to distinguish between different types, like uh, gold for coolant and, uh, say, blue anodize for brake adapter say uh, a red anodized for a power steering or a transmission. So they use color to distinguish and they use the hard coat surface treatments for withstanding a little bit more wear and tear. Now that I have some of these wiped off, I don't feel too many burrs on this. I don't believe this here has been running for a long time, this adapter, so it's still pretty clean. But you can see just a little bit of, of scuffing right here on the, the side of this piston where it's been riding inside the sleeve. So of course you want to keep it smooth. They do have some pretty tight tolerances. But they have to have them for sealing to be able to pull vacuum and fill with fluid without having leaks. Now that I have this pretty much wiped off and cleaned, yeah. when you're doing this at a bench, you have air you can blow it off with, you have other other tools that you'd be able to use to make the job a little bit easier. But if you're out on the line, you don't have access to any of those tools. These are the best things that you can do is to wipe it off and maybe have a little file with you so that you can 
file a rough edge. Make sure it's still flat surface. No burrs are really sticking up. I was just showing you how to take it off. I mean, I can take them all off if yeah. you'd like them all to come off. It no, would, do they normally you know? get replaced? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can replace the jaws. A lot of times they'll replace the springs. Okay. After a while of wearing and tearing and pushing and the spring tendency. Uh, it collapses. Yeah, it kind of it collapses. Sometimes they get bent with a little bit of debris off of maybe a reservoir that had some uh, some burrs or some chips or something on it or it might have had a little bit of debris in it or something like that and get caught in it and it could bend a spring even you know I mean now you got to replace it so it, it makes it easier to take them apart with these these shoulder screws that screw in makes it a lot easier used to have to hold the jaw in your hand and take a punch and hold it and tap it to, to punch the you know the dowel pin out to put it in but uh, this is a unique idea to use a, a shoulder screw like this to hold it in makes it a lot easier to change them out So what I'll do here is I'll reassemble the jaw first and set this off to the side. I take my spring, I put it in the, the pocket, the spring pocket right there on the jaw, and I will take it and put it on the face and just kind of Hold it all together there with my finger and with my eye I will look through the screw hole and I'll line up the holes. Once I got the holes lined up, I'll take my shoulder bolt and I will push that in there. Once I get it through, I will tighten up the screw, give it a little snug turn, and there's my jaw. All right, now I already loosened all of these up, so I'm going to tighten them up as if I I've just taken all of them out. I'll just go right around the circle here. And now that they are all tight, I'll set this detail on the side. Now I'm going to Get my seal kit out here, set my seals on the side, I'm going to put all the uh, seals I'm replacing in the empty bag. Now, I've conveniently marked the bag with the seals on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do each individual piece here, starting with uh, the housing and jaws. 
detail all three on the print. And I'm going to look over here where I will find the O-ring and glide ring here. And it is marked off to the side right here on the bottom, 107, 114. So I'll look on the print here for 107 and 114. 114 is a glide ring for 546, 126. My glide rings are right here. And the 107 would be two O rings, a 2127 Buna, which is right here. And then we'll take those out. Grease over here. Move some of this stuff out of my way. And I'm going to pull. Set that on the side. Get my glide ring. And What we use here at Dominion for lubricating all the seals is a PST 407. We get ours from G-Man. This is the only lubrication we use on all adapters. We seem to have the least amount of problems, practically no problems at all with this lubricant. As you can see, the consistency is like a, like a grease but it's more the consistency of a, I'd like to compare it to like a thick applesauce. Okay. I'll set this bag down here. And what I'll do is I'll lube up this whole ring. And I will take it with my fingers and kind of just bend it and slip it right in the groove, pushing it in with my finger till it snaps right in. Now, with the excess, I just put a little thin coat. You don't have to if you don't have a lot, but it helps. And I'll Take and hold it right in the groove with my finger here. And the end that is sticking out, I will push in until you get it formed like this. Then I'll line up all the rest of the glide ring with the groove and the o-ring inside. Once I've done that, I will push that glide ring down. And it will land right there in the groove. Now, to make it a little simpler to assemble, I will this piece. I'll take the round end, the rounded smooth end of my pick, and I will take it around the edge of the glide ring and just kind of push it in. Because it's somewhat like a a plastic material. It's made of a uh, turquoise, I believe they call it, and it's got some flexibility to it. It'll bend that 
flat end down towards the groove. Then I'll take and I'll do the other side. And this is going to help me when I reassemble it. Okay. Now, once I've got that in there, you can see the tapered end of the piston. I will put a little bit of this lubricant on the tapered end. And I'll twist. Now, as I was twisting, you can see where the slide ring, slide ring started popping out on the one end. I can push that back down in just a little bit without putting pressure on it and wiggle the piston and if it still keeps on doing it you have to start over and push the round end on the edges. And slightly wiggle it. Come in from the other side a little bit just to get that o-ring fitted. Now this one seems to want to give me a little bit of trouble here. So it looks like I'm going to have to mess with it a little bit more. Wow. They usually go in a little bit easier than this. Yeah, you gotta get that edge down just a little bit more. There it goes. Glide rings are pretty tricky, but they're pretty pliable and flexible. If you play with them a little bit, you can get it to go in there. But it's sometimes you have to, to mess with them. Because that O-ring is in there kind of like holding that glide ring out. So that it pushes up against the, the piston and seals. Okay. Try again. It still wants to come out right here. Don't know why. Just a little bit more there. Yeah. 
and there she goes. Sometimes you have to play with it just a little bit. But you don't want to tear it up just in case it's the only one you have. And then I'll work that in there a little bit. Making sure that it's in there. Twisting around. Yeah, so that's a pretty tight tolerance in that. Yeah, you can see the movement. Takes a little effort to move it, but that's what you want. You want that tight seal right there. And you don't want to really gouge that, that uh, glide ring. Once I got that in there, I'll let that set to the side and I'll put the O-rings the, on the piston and the piston assembly kind of last. Now I'm going to put all the seals on the, the other details here after I wipe them off and check them for any wear, tear, and burrs. This one seems to be nice and smooth. Good. All right, now I will kind of lube up that pocket right here for where the piston's going to go in. And then I'll check over here for my O-rings for that detail there, which is uh, it is uh, the manifold housing sleeve housing. But it's calling out a 106, which is a 2119. That'll go right on the top. Set that in there. And on the side, we have a, a 109, which is a 2150. of these so I'll set the extra one here we'll be using it in a few minutes so we'll move that one up and on my print it shows down here at the bottom which is going to be this groove right here this is where I'll put this one but you can see that it's not going to fit in the, the other groove. So I'll spring that in there. Then we'll check here for the other, which is going to be a 2114. Now these are bunal rings, more like a, like a neoprene type rubber. For pretty much coolant and um, I believe it's mineral based fluids.
unlike the brake adapter used in the EPRs for synthetics. So I'll put this in right there. And then I'll get my smaller O-rings, which is going to be the one in the center. Is uh, two one one seven and now this one here is going to go right down here inside on the edge of the wall. You got two ways. You can put it in this way, or you can put it in down here on this side. I'm going to just reach in here with my finger. And I kind of set the O-ring kind of like oblong on it, and I push it into the side with my finger. And it'll be setting in like that, where I can push the edge down. If you don't get it caught on your finger. And I can push the edge down and it'll snap inside. Once I got that, I have a couple more O-rings, and then that one will be ready. I have the smaller top ones, which are the 2004s. They kind of seal up all the air pilots that move everything around. Now, I'll just get them all kind of lubed up a little bit to start and then slide them on the top where I can just Slide them right into the grooves. And then take a little bit of a white layer across the top. And now this one here is ready to be assembled. Now I'll get the seals for the locking sleeve, which when I look up over here, it's listing two different numbers right here in the corner where you can see the mark out on your print. One fifty and one ten, one fifty two. So I'll use up the other one fifty for one groove, and the one fifty two for the other. Now you can see the difference in size, so. You know, the smaller one's going to go on the inside groove and the larger one's on the outside. Now. Pop this one in, hold it in with my finger and just Slide these over. Okay. 
I'm going to slide this one over the top. Get that all set. Now that one's ready. Now, what I'm going to do is get the piston. The piston's going to get a glide ring too. Gets the other one, two, seven, and then it gets an outside glide ring. Is a five four seven one two eight. Now you can match these up, and you know that it fits right around the O ring. So what I'm going to do. Loop up the O-ring, put it on the piston, and then I'm going to take and we'll hold the glide ring in the groove with my thumb and I'm going to push my fingers and it snaps the glide ring on. Now, if you guessed, I have to seat that glide ring. Now that glide ring goes out of there. That glide ring is going to go right in here, and I've already lubed it up. Now there's a little air pocket right here. I always check that. Just to make sure nothing's sticking out with my finger that would cut the glide ring or the O-ring because it was going in there. Now I'll take my piston out of here because it sat long enough to where I should be able to get it in and out of there. And I will seat. First, I'll put a little bit of this. I noticed that this piece here is going to go inside of an O-ring in here already. So you want to make sure that's lubricated there. Now I'll take it and just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Seems to be a little bit tight. You can see where it's pushing up right there as I'm trying to get it inside of here. It's got a recess right here that lifts it up to where it's going to seal on the side there. It's a nice little taper. Okay? So if it isn't going to go in right away, I'm going to have to press the edges down with the side of my pick on this one. What I do is I'm pushing it this way so I want to take and go along the edge kind of pushing the seal the seal's edge, smoothing it out, pushing it down on the groove. I'm not doing it with a lot of force. I'm just kind of like rounding it off right there because you got the O-ring pushing it out as you're trying to put it in. So it's going to fight it a little bit. So 
Once I do that edge, I do the other side. Get them both smooth. Okay. And give it a try. Doesn't seem to want to, uh, it's trying to lift out right there again. So, I'll do this again until I get it. Put it on the plastic where I can slide. Let's see if we can't do that again. It seems it wants to push out. And it's sort of lubed up so it sort of can slide in there a little bit? Oh yeah. It's got a lube on it. It's, these glide rings like to fight. They're not the easiest things to. Okay, it's starting. It's getting ready. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off for right now. Usually I can get it on the first, maybe second try. in here. Try moving the O-ring up just a little bit. Sometimes twisting it a little bit helps. Hmm. Okay, let's go the other way. Move the O-ring down. Yeah, this here is the hardest part of doing these. Most of, most of uh, our customers say these glide rings are boogers. And you can see why. <laughs> they take some work. Let me try a different one. Yeah, this one here. Get the rounded end. So I got that little rounded end there. So 
we'll try to round that off right there. Yep. Sometimes this works quick, sometimes it doesn't. in there. Okay. Okay. Now I'm ready to subassemble the piston. And you want to make sure this is lubed in here where the piston's going to ride. So you put a little bit right there, right here. Make sure I have my O-ring in here. Push that in just right there. You can see it pop into the groove from this end. Then you take You twist that around a little bit. Make sure it's moving pretty good. Okay. Now I can finish with my O-ring seals here. A little bit of lube on those. Okay. Now what am I And then you lube this O-ring up here that goes on top of your housing where your jaw assembly's at. It is a uh, detail 2032. And that can just set right here on the bottom. What I'm going to do is going to pop this. Right on there. And I'm going to take in the socketed cap screw holes, I'm going to turn until I see the threaded holes that they line up in. Now I can take and subassemble this back together. Making sure I don't lose any of my lock washers. There's no specific orientation for this detail, so you can subassemble it pretty much like this. 
And it should still work out. Ah, oh, you fell off. Uh oh. When it falls off, try it again. If you got small fingers, you can reach in there. and get it up in that part right there. Or you can hold it up like this, do it like that, it's easier. <laughs> Got them all in there. Now, I'm not going to crank these down super tight. They have lock washers. I got it hand tight right there. On all of them. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of extra leverage. So they don't loosen up and come out. But I'm not reefing on them. Okay. Now that I have that, I can take now, the reason I lubricated the whole inside of this is you have two O-rings right here that this piece here is going to ride on, all right? And you have an O-ring on the inside that's going to ride right here on this wall. So you want to make sure that stuff's pretty good lubed up, okay? This O-ring right here on the inside of this wall will be able to ride on that part. And I pop this over the top. And I just push down. Now it's all setting. Now you see this little lip right here is going to set in this area where this O-ring is going to ride on top of it. So I'm going to bring this up to about that little lip right there. My jaws are still going to be open. I'm going to bring this one down on here. And I'm going to push. like that until it comes up flat and parallel with the top of here. Now, I will lubricate all the seal areas on the bottom of the manifold. You have your three screws. Which I'm going to put the smaller one in first. Now, see a little smiley face like right down here at the bottom? That's going to be all your O-ring seals right here. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So the lone screw hole is up at the top. That's where I'm going to put that screw and set the manifold down. I'm 
lay these screws the longer two inside their screw grooves. You're going to start this screw right here. And I didn't tighten it all the way. Now, if it's off, you can see the screws dropped when you just gave it a little nudge. So you know they're located and you keep them pressure kind of down to hold in the the O-ring seals that are on the top. So now I can tighten these screws down. Now I don't crank them but I tighten them up enough to pull the manifold down on top of the O-ring seals and squash the seals down to create a seal. Now once you're done with all of that and it's fully assembled, I'll show you that These fittings right here, press-in fittings, if they're damaged, you can screw them out and you can order new ones. They're on your print labeled Detail 112. Right here you can see. And they're called out and you can order new ones. And Having your new ones, when you rebuild, you can then replace the damaged fittings, push-in fittings, pilot holes. Now they have a seal right here on the bottom. You want to make sure that when you put one on that it has that seal. This seal can't come off. And it can be lost. It's just a flat, rubber-coated washer. And that just screws out. And screws in with an Allen wrench. And that completes rebuilding the 625X 9747 coolant adapter. Now it's ready for a run out. And then you move this o-ring up here that goes on top of your housing where your jaw assembly is at. It is a uh, detail 2032. And that can just set right here on the bottom. 